Hello quilters, it's Jane Truman here from Poppy Patchwork and in today's video I'm going to show you how to make a Bargello from start to finish. Some of you may have watched my other Bargello uh, video um, and that was really just the beginning part of how to do Bargello. It was uh, made for uh, people attending a workshop that I was running and it was showing them what they had to do before they came to the workshop. So in today's video I am going to show you from start to finish how to make a Bargello. So I'm using um, a jelly roll from Kona, I think it's a Kona Solids jelly roll and um, I've used the seven colours of the rainbow plus a few extra because for this pattern we're going to need 11 colours. So each of these is a strip from the jelly roll and I am going to use half of the long strip. So I'm going to cut each of these strips in half along the short edge. So I will do that and come back to you. So when I'm cutting jelly roll strips, I leave them folded in half and um, I'm just going to cut the um, fold off here. So, what you will need, um, if you're not using jelly roll strips, you will need a piece that measures two and a half inches by 23 inches, more or less. So I'm just going to cut the rest of these strips up. So now that I've done this, I'm going to put them back in placement order of how I'm going to sew them together. So there we go, that is um, the colours that I'm using and the placement um, that I want to sew them together, I want to sew them in that order. Um, so what I'm going to do, just so that I don't forget, but that's the order I want to sew them in. I'm just going to take a little picture with my uh, mobile phone so I can refer back to that um, as I'm going through the project. So I've got my strips of fabric to one side piled up in the order in which I want to sew them and the first two I'm going to sew together are the pink and the red. So I'm going to put these right sides together And um, I'm going to do a quarter inch seam down this long edge here and I've reduced the length of my stitch to 2.0 uh, which is going to be helpful when I come to subcut these up for the Bargello. So I'm just going to sew these down and I'll come back to you. There we go, so I've joined the um, first two strips together. I started sewing at this end up here. So I'm going to pop a pin in here to say that was where I started sewing. And I sewed in the direction from the pin down to the other end. The reason I've done this is because uh, when you sew strips together, you can sometimes get distortation, distortation um, with the sewing. So when I'm doing my next um, strip, my orange to my red, instead of starting up at this end where the pin is, I'm actually going to start down at the opposite end and then um, over this side and I'm going to come backwards and as I sew all the strips together I kind of go zigzagging down one way and then back up the other way.
you will notice that I'm not pressing these seams as I go I'm going to um, press everything at the end so I'm just going to continue now um, sewing all the um, colours together So now we've finished sewing it together, I'm going to lay this out before I take it over to the ironing board. So there we go, we have um, all of our strips joined together and we're going to take this to the ironing board and I'll show you how to iron them. Okay. So we have finished sewing all the strips together and now we need to iron it. The first thing we're going to do is set the seams. So taking each stitch line in turn, we're just going to run the iron across that seam just to set it. So now that we've done that, we're going to take each of these seams and we're going to press them together in a direction and they're going to be alternate directions. So this first one, pink and red, we are going to set away from ourselves. So we're going to press those away. And then the next set, the orange and red, we're going to turn the um, sewing around and then press those away. Now if I flip this over, what you can see is that these seams are pressed in this direction and these seams are pressed in this direction. And so we're just going to alternate that all the way through. So we started by pressing the pink away from the red and then we did the red towards the orange now we're going to press the yellow towards the orange so I always do this by folding it back on itself and then pressing it down and away like that and then I'm going to flip it so that again I'm pressing away from myself and this time I'm going to press the yellow towards the green so again pulling it back and now pressing that yellow towards the green flip it again so we've got the pink up here and so this time I'm going to press the dark green towards the light green And we're going to do the dark green towards the lighter blue. And then flip it. And this time we're doing the lighter, the dark blue towards the lighter blue. Again, just lifting that up. So that was the dark blue towards the lighter blue. And then we flip it and we do the dark blue towards the dark purple and then we flip it and do the dark purple towards the mid purple I'm just going to flip it onto its back now and see where we're at. So I've got, here I've got the red fabric is going outwards. And then, so this should be out. And then this one 
should be in. So again, I'm just going to press that on this side to make sure that it's coming in. So we've got out and in, out and in, out and in. I'm going to just check that that's the case all the way down. So out and in, out, just press that bit there. This is an in and that is an out. This is an in, this is an out. So this one here should be an in. And that final one should be an out. Now what I can do again is flip it back over and give it a nice press from the top. So pressing it in this way, it will become clear later on, but in doing it this way, you will find that the seams are going to intersect nicely. Now we've got one last seam to sew, and that is the purple or the lilac to the pink. So the two end edge seams have to be sewn together to make a tube of fabric. So I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and do that. And now that I've sewn that, I'm going to just press that. Again, this time I'm going to uh, press this in. So now that that has been sewn and pressed, we now need to get a nice straight edge and cut off all of these jiggly jaggedy bits here. So I'm going to line the stitch lines that I can see along the uh, lines on the ruler to make sure we've got it nice and straight. and then making sure that I'm taking off all the salvage edges. I'm going to cut. So now we've got a really nice straight edge that we can do our cutting from. So with our straight edge here we're going to line up the ruler and the first cut we're going to make is 2.75 inches. So with my ruler, 1, 2 and then 0.75 and I'm going to make that cut first. The next cut is two and a half. So again, lining all of that up, I'm now going to cut two and a half. Next cut is 2.25 or two and a quarter. So nearly cut that wrong there. So this is two and a quarter. The next cut is two inches. The 
next cut is one and three quarters or 1.75. Then one and three quarters. Next cut is one and a half. Next cut is one and a quarter. Next cut is going back up again now, one and a half. Next cut is one and three quarters. The next cut is two. that's where we will finish. So we now have lots of little tubes and I'm going to um, turn these the right way now. I'm going to just lay it with the pink ones at the top back in the order that we cut it. Okay, so we've got all the cut pieces, they're all lined up, they all look the same, but now we're going to see if we can do the Bargello magic. So before we, we're going to have to unpick, but we're not going to do that first. We're going to start with this pink one here and then this time round we're going to have the purple up here we're just going to put the fold there this time we're going to take this fold and we've got the mid purple or the dark purple at the top then we're going to fold it so it has the dark blue at the top this time we're going to have the mid blue at the top then we're going to have the turquoisey blue at the top. Then we will have the dark green folded there at the top. Then the light green. Then we're going to have the yellow. And finally we're going to have the orange at the top and so now you can begin to see a little bit of a wave taking place so what we can now do is we can unpick along here so I'll do that and then I'll show you what it looks like I had a little bit of a look at it and I realized that what I needed to do was as we were going from the wider pieces down to the narrower piece we wanted to use that as the turning point so we've got to the narrowest piece here and then I switched them and I turned them so that we went back down so before I had I had a light green up here and it was just going again in this nice straight line but by turning it skipping two colours so you're not turning the loop but you're just skipping two colours you're bringing the yellow back down and then you continue with bringing that yellow down like so and what you will find then is you get this wave so it's coming along here and it peaks and then it comes back down 
So I am now going to open that up and then I will show you what that looks like with all the colours on display. So now I've opened these up and we're getting a bit more of the full picture. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew each column all across until they're all sewn together, making sure that we match the seams. So I'll demonstrate with this first one. This is where um, pressing the seams in opposite directions really comes in helpfully handy because now we can nest those two seams together. So whereas this seam was, is pointing this way, this seam is pointing the opposite direction, where they join, they will nestle in together. And that is where I'm going to place a pin exactly on that seam. I'm also going to put a pin right at the very end. It doesn't uh, get away from me. And now I'm just going to go down the entire seam, pinning at each intersection. If you need to, just finger press those seams back out of the way into where they should be falling and um, carry on pinning. This is one occasion when I will pin quite a lot. I like to always pin the intersections to make sure that uh, those points are going to join nicely together. Nearly there. I picked up that blunt one again. Let's put it to one side. Okay, so I'm just going to sew this together. I always like to take pins out because I don't want to sew over them. I can hand break a needle if you do that. There we go, that's the first one sewn. I'm going to sew all the rest together and then I'll show you what it looks like. The first section of the Bargello has been sewn together and I think it's looking pretty good. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is sew the second section of the Bargello together. I'm going to sew the strips together, and press them like I've already shown you and then um, I'll take you through cutting the second set of strips. So I have sewn together the um, second set of strips and I'm now ready to cut these. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to even up the edge here to get a nice straight edge to cut against. So like I did before I'm going to look at the stitch lines, line them up with the ruler lines and then make sure I'm cutting all of the selvages off I'm then going to cut a nice clean edge. So we are now going to cut the final set of Bargello strips and a slightly different. Uh, we're going to continue with the same um, widths as in one and three quarters, one and a half, etc. But we stopped um, the last set stopped at two inches wide. So we're going to continue to reduce that and we're going to go to 1.75 or one and three quarters. 
So let's cut this at one and three quarters. The next one is still going down. We're going to cut it at one and a half. There we go, lined up, one and a half. The next cut is 1.25 or one and a quarter. And now we're going to start increasing again. So we're going to go to one and a half. One and three quarters. And now two. And the last one is going to be two and a quarter. So as you can see from the second set of strips, we don't need quite as many, and so we've got more leftovers. So what we're going to do now is get the previous section we've made out and then decide where we're going to unpick these new pieces. So this is the one that we did earlier and we're just going to start adding to it. So we can see here the yellow is coming down here and we need to continue in that design. Now I've just realised I've made a bit of a mistake because I'm working from the last cut that I made and actually what we need to do is turn our pile over and we're coming to the smaller ones, the ones that we first cut. So the first one is the 1.75 inch one and we are going to remember that the last one we did here was two inches so this one goes here, I think, which means, let me just change that, which means that we are going to be unpicking it at this point here between the light lilac and the dark lilac. So I'm just going to position that down here at the bottom. And then we're going smaller again. So continuing in the same way, we are going to bring that up like that. I'm just going to move this over so that you can see it all on camera. And now we're coming to the very smallest cut. So that one goes there. And this is where we change direction. So 
so coming back down it's always a little bit tricky at this point to make sure that you get them positioned in the right way and that's why I don't like to unpick them until I know that I've got them positioned correctly. Again we're coming back down on the colours so there we go just a couple more to put on So, you can see how the pattern is continuing. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to unpick um, along here and lay them out and then we can see the pattern in its fullness. So, I have now unpicked um, the tubes and laid them out as we're going to sew them and uh, you can see that the Bargello pattern is continuing along here. I like to follow the yellow and it's doing this nice wave as it goes along the pattern. So I'm going to sew the Bargello strips together now um, like I showed you before and when I come back we can see the completed top. So I've now finished sewing both sets of um, Bargello strips together and this is what it looks like. Um, now, for those eagle-eyed viewers, you will have noticed that there was a mistake when I sewed the first set of strips together. I didn't see this until I had sewn the second strips to the first strips. So when I spotted my error, I simply unpicked them and sewed them back together again. So this is now error-free. And you can see, it is really, really rather beautiful. So initially I had thought I was going to make this into a very big floor cushion but in the course of making it my daughter said to me how lovely she thought the colours were, um, you know, reminding her of the rainbow. So instead of making it into a cushion I have decided to make it into a wool hanging for her. So um, I don't have all the bits and pieces for that now. When I do I will post another video showing how I finished it off into a wall hanging. But hopefully you have enjoyed this video about how to make a Bargello. I hope you enjoyed this video of how to make a Bargello from start to finish. Please subscribe to my channel, I will be posting more videos and if you've got any comments add them below and let me know what you'd like to see me make next. See you later, bye!